I mean, the fact that this isn't passing on suspension just says everything about my friends across the aisle, that you can't condemn socialism. I mean, in your opening remarks, you were talking about Putin, Kim Jong-un, and, and Z. You know what they all have in common, right? Trump. <laughs> Trump? <laughs> If there is one Democratic leader that the Republicans do not want it with, it is Congresswoman Maxine Waters from the 43rd Congressional District of California. Listen, as she not only embarrasses the congressman who asked her the ridiculous question about socialism, but she managed a twofer by humiliating Donald Trump as well. Talking about Putin, Kim Jong-un, and, and Z, you know what they all have in common, right? Trump. <laughs> Trump? <laughs> They North, North Korea, anymore. China, and Russia? He loves Kim Jong-un. That, that's quite the intellectual leap. I would say communism. Uh, would you like to denounce any communist leaders? Well, I don't know what you're asking, but let me just. The leader of the Republican Party, Donald Trump, has made often glowing, described authoritarians like Kim Jong-un, who is condemned in the resolution. Regarding North Korean leader Kim Jong-un, Trump uh, said Kim wrote me beautiful letters, and they're great letters, and we fell in love. You sure you want to hear the rest of this? In actuality, Congresswoman Waters, he does not want you to continue, because if you continued, you would have easily exposed the hypocrisy of the Republican Party requiring Democrats to condemn socialist leaders or socialism on the international stage when their beloved Donald Trump praised the very leaders that they now want Democrats to condemn. We covered this yesterday with Jim McGovern, the representative from the state of Massachusetts. We denounce Kim Jong-un. Well, not all of us, actually. It was the leader of the Republican Party, Donald Trump, who said he fell in love with him. Regarding North Korean leader Kim Jong-un, Trump said Kim wrote me beautiful letters, and they're great letters, and we fell in love. You sure you want to hear the rest of this? One, Donald Trump praised the very leaders they want Democrats to condemn, but two, they refused to condemn Nazis. We gave you an opportunity to expand the list to include the Nationalist Socialists, which are the Nazis, and everybody voted no on the Republican side. They want to condemn socialism, but not Nazism. Did they denounce that? And then most of all, this is a technique of the Republican Party because they have no actual policies that they can stand on. They have to make a boogeyman for you to be afraid of in order to scare the American people into voting against their best economic interests. We have seen this since time immemorial. This is the only play the conservative movement has. And they also want to soften America up with the idea of eliminating Social Security and Medicare because they are labeling it. They believe that it is socialism. And just as Jim McGovern said yesterday, Republicans don't actually have a problem with socialism because they readily redistribute the wealth that is gathered by taxation in this country and send it up to their donors to the oligarchs, to the wealthiest one percent in this country, Republican cronies. The Republican Party are the best examples of socialism in this country when you consider the $2 trillion giveaway that Donald Trump gave to the wealthiest in this country. That is redistribution of wealth. They want it going up, but not coming down. But I also want you to look at the technique that this representative tried to use on Maxine Waters. And I absolutely loved her approach of dismissing it by stating the obvious. I mean, in your opening remarks, you were talking about Putin, Kim Jong-un, and, and Z, you know what they all have in common, right? Trump. <laughs> Trump? <laughs> North, North Korea, anymore. China, and Russia? He loves Kim Jong-un. That, that but we should keep in mind that this is going to become more prevalent now that the Republican Party has a little bit of power. And it's fitting that the sitting Speaker of the House name is Kevin McCarthy because the technique that the Republicans are now using is reminiscent of the McCarthyism of 1954, where Joseph McCarthy used his platform and his power to vilify all of his political and social enemies by labeling them as communists. Listen to how this representative framed the question to Maxine Waters. Uh, would you like to denounce any communist leaders? He's but one step away from asking her if she was now or ever affiliated with the Communist Party. 
The Republican Party never has had a policy that they can forward without creating a boogeyman for everyone to be afraid of. This is exactly what we're seeing across the country. Ron DeSantis is a master of this. He knows how to create a boogeyman, something that doesn't exist but use it to rile up his base into a frenzy so that he can actually accomplish two things, both the racism that is entrenched in his bones. I mean, we don't dare dismiss the fact that the Republican Party, the modern Republican Party, is filled with white supremacists like Ronald DeSantis, but also the fact that they want to distract from the economic policies that they are employing. In the state of Florida, Ron DeSantis used this exact technique to raise taxes on the average Floridian while giving away benefits to corporations like Publix. So keep in mind that this is their agenda. While they want to use this technique to make their constituents afraid, the reason they want to make their constituents afraid is because they need to be able to get away with policies that will redistribute wealth to the top. That's the Republican playbook. The same Republicans who decry anything the government does is socialism never seem to have a problem when it comes to huge handouts for billionaire corporations. They want socialism for the rich, but capitalism for the poor. Most of all, we have to be mindful of the era that we're coming into. We are absolutely moving into the time of inquisition where the Republican Party is going to be questioning every single person that testifies before them, whether or not they believe in woke ideology, whether or not they believe in critical race theory, whether or not they believe in socialism. And they're going to label each of these things as ambiguously as possible. They will never define them because if they were to ever define the meanings of these words, then we would easily be able to dismiss it for the racism and for the demagoguery that it is. But by keeping these wide open, loose terms with poorly defined definitions, they are able to make it mean anything. Uh, would you like to denounce any communist leaders? And so when they say socialism, they absolutely are including simple things like a fire department, like roads, like public education. Are we talking about public schools? Are we talking about roads? Are we talking about social security? I mean, give me a break that you can't condemn socialism. I mean, in your opening remarks, you were talking about Putin, Kim Jong-un, and, and Z. You know what they all have in common, right? Trump. <laughs> Trump? <laughs> North, North Korea, fun. China, and Russia? He loves Kim Jong-un. That, that's quite the intellectual leap. I would say communism. Uh, would you like to denounce any communist leaders? Well... I don't know what you're asking, but let me just. The leader of the Republican Party, Donald Trump, has made often glowing, described authoritarians like Kim Jong-un, who is condemned in the resolution. Regarding North Korean leader Kim Jong-un, Trump uh, said Kim wrote me beautiful letters, and they're great letters, and we fell in love. You sure you want to hear the rest of this? Be sure to like, share, and subscribe to this channel.